Hello guys, VG Hunty again with another build video. I'm going to try and release as many builds as I can. Um, uh, it's day two, day three. Yeah, day three of the release on PS4. So I'm trying to smash these out for you guys um, to help you guys out on PS4 so you can start setting up your builds. Okay, so today we're going through the Magic DK. Okay, um, I've been playing solo with this um, and it, I've just been melting people down. To be honest with you, the damage... Is broken I'm in heavy armor and the damage is broken okay now I think you can all guess what set I'm gonna be wearing for the damage to be broken and for me to be in heavy fruit to still cause this amount of damage all right okay so let's get straight into it let's go into the sets because that's all everyone really cares about okay front bar we're running the Sun okay we're running the uh, sword and board of the Sun back bar we're running willpower Um Resto infused with the weapon and spell damage enchantment, okay, to get m the most out of spell damage. We're running the Scoria monster set, okay, if you want a bit more tankiness. We're in heavy, so technically you shouldn't want to. Um, is go Bloodspawn, or you could use Grofdar for the more max magic, or you could, if you really want to pump the stats, then you could go one Grofdar, um, and obviously one. Dommer House, okay, but I prefer the burst you get from Scoria. If you uh, listen out for the Scoria to proc and try and time that with your leap and stuff, it adds to the damage um, and really, really does <laughs> an, an immense amount of burst. Okay, and then our five piece on the body is, yes, you all would have guessed it, uh, as Salodes, okay. We're running um, Salodes heavy on the body pieces. Okay, as we all know, this set is broken. You've either been killed by it or you're using it and you know it's broken anyway. Okay, this is uh, Oblivion damage. As you can see there, this is buffed. Okay, I don't know which buff by, but I'm doing 1013 um, Oblivion damage, uh, which is just absolute aids every second. Do you know what I mean? It's just like another Burning Embers tick. So it's basically, I've got Burning Embers on him, then I've got this on him. You know, and then I'm whipping them and putting pressure on. I've got burning talons on them. I'm melting them down, I've, you know, and I'm just putting that pressure on them constantly. Then I get the, while I'm grinding them down, I've got the burst from the scoria and the leap, okay, with the whips and stuff. It just real amounts, um, a really OP amount of pressure. Okay, and then obviously we're running the sun on the jewelry. I'm running one recovery, okay. Ideally, I'd probably go reduce cost here because to be honest we don't need recovery on a mag dk as long as you're using the heavy, heavy resto every now and again um and obviously you i'm an argonian so i've got i'm using tripod so i'm getting all my stuff back from that and then obviously we get our stuff back from ultimates as well okay so i either go all damage and just be absolute aids damage or you could just go one reduced cost and then two uh, spell damage um, like i have there Okay, so that's the gear. Let's go into the skills. Skills have changed slightly. So we're using Fragmented Shield. Okay, this gives us um, a longer duration on Major Mending. So now it's increased uh, by... F now it's 5.4 seconds. Okay, which is a big uptime, especially as we're using our heal over time. It just allows it to have two procs with Major Mending up instead of one. Um, and also it'll... While we're popping as coagulating blood, okay, that is also, we don't have to go igneous coagulating, igneous coagulating. I can go igneous and do two coagulatings within one igneous, okay, so we don't have to spam it as much. Therefore, we're saving magic. Reflective plate, obviously, we're uh, using this now because this is the snare remover, removes all snares um, effects, okay. The only drama with this, I really think they should have given you immunity for at least one or two seconds when you cast this. Because basically, if you're in one of them ruins, like the Templin ruin that gives a snare, literally you can cast this, remove the snare, and if you're still in it, bam, you're snared again. So I really do reckon they should rework this and probably just put an immunity on it for one or two seconds. Because if you've got people chasing you down and someone's spamming Vampire's Bane, you can cast this, and then you're instantly snared again as soon as he, as soon as he procs it again. So it is a little bit annoying, but to be honest with you, it's well worth using. It's a, it's a lot more, um, it's a lot cheaper than misform um, and I definitely I definitely prefer this over misform and also you we know we've all got a lot of snipers and there's a lot of projectiles being thrown at us in this game at the moment um, so ref the wings are literally OP at the moment to use Coagulant Blood okay this is going to be like our rally if you're a stamina player and you're looking at going Magicka this is going to be our rally burst heal 
okay um, it's not a bad it's not a bad heal to be honest but it's not a spammable light rally isn't you don't spam this ability so you'd pop an igneous the max you would do is two coagulated buds in a row and then you sort of need to either get some line of sight or get on the front foot and uh, take the pressure off yourself okay then we've got a resistance buff uh, which is a volatile armor you can go for the one with the shield but I use this one one it's an extra dot okay which is one proc saludes uh, and two just adds an extra drop for extra pressure and also it gives us those resistances and uh, it also pulls night blades out of stealth so when you've got a night blade being irritating and whatever you can be an absolute nightmare to him you know you're fossilizing you choke with talons him he goes into stealth you're pulling him out with spiked armor he's just an absolute turbo we can't get a heal he's in shit state you're gonna grind him down Okay, and then on the back bar, we're running Structured Entropy. I've explained this before, but I'll explain it again. Uh, the Structured Entropy, we run this because it gives us the extra health, okay? And Coagulating Blood goes off missing health. So the bigger the health pool we got, obviously, the more missing health we're going to get. Um, and therefore, we get a bigger heal from Coagulating Blood. Uh, also, it's our Spell Power buff as well. So you want to Light Attack Weave... Um, this on the back bar before you go into combat. Then on the back bar, Devouring Swarm. Now this is open. You know you can use Devouring, uh, De uh, Devouring Swarm. You can use Resto Ulti. To be honest, it's up to you. To be honest, I use Devouring Swarm um, mainly if I'm outnumbered by two, three, four people. You know I'll pop this. I'll get straight onto the front foot, front foot, get my talons down. Hopefully my score procs and I'm being one or two down, and then happy days. It's a lifesaver as well, big time. Oh, it's gone to the front bar. So, Burning Embers, this is our Helo. Uh, this is our, like, damage over time ability. You want to keep this on for as long as you can because it just absolutely gets really intense on them. You can see it melting them down. Also, if you do need that other heal while you're on the front, while you're on the front bar, okay, just spam this again um, and it'll give you another little quick burst heal. Okay, so as you can see there, heals you for 78% of the total damage inflicted when you when the effect ends. So that also means when you recast it. So say you do a burning embers, then a whip, 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 like two, three whips, and you've done like, you know, 16k damage. It'll give you, you know, 78% of that 16k, which is better than nothing, trust me. It saved my life quite a few times. And then we're going for quarter eyes. Okay, I've gone, because I play a lot of solo and small scale stuff, I have gone for the heal one now, this patch. Okay, this is my, again, if you're moving from Stam to Magicka, okay, this is my Vigor tick. Okay, so we have as Rally sort of heal, and then we have as Vigor sort of heal. This is going to be healing us for a consistent, rougher on average, you know, 4 and half, 5k uh, with Major Mending. Um, it's going to give, let's have a look. Um, when it's marked, there you go, 5.4k, roughly 5k heal um, ticks in Cyrodiil, okay? It's going to be our heal over time. I found this uh, to add a lot more survivability um, and allow me to stay on the front foot a lot longer um, when this is healing me up. Then we go for Burning Talons, okay? This is another, it's just another burning um, an effect on them. And another dot while they're inside them. Also a massive inconvenience. It's a soft CC, not hard CC. So it doesn't conflict with your fossilized. Okay, so you can keep locking them up with burning talons. Um, and keep trying to keep them static so you can keep the pressure on them. Then we go for shattering rocks. We're going for shattering rocks this patch. Um, as you can see. So in case uh, the enemy in stone. So this is our hard CC. Uh, this effect ends. The next attack within 4 seconds heals the target for f nearly 6k, okay? That's without, obviously, um, Major Mending, okay? There you go, 7.3, uh, so nearly 7.4k uh, heal. Obviously, that's reduced in Cyrodiil, but you're looking at another 5k heal there just for the effect ending and you're, you're doing an attack. Your attack is going to be Flame Lash, which is your main spammable. Therefore, if the target is off balance or um, all that sort of stuff, you will proc the um, extra ability, which is the Power Lash. Therefore, will heal you as well. So we've got quite a lot of abilities while we're being offensive healing us. This is healing us on the front bar. This can heal us. Okay. This will heal us at the end of the uh, end of the 
the skill and we're casting damage moves after it, it will heal us. And then obviously Flame Lash is going to be healing as well, we're attacking as well. So as long as we're keeping, you know, all his buffs up, his heal over time, and and constantly attacking, getting the heals from these uh, these skills, you should be good. For 1v1, honestly, like, there's not many classes at the moment that compete with Mag DK for 1v1s because as you're putting the pressure on consistently, you are just melting him down, you're getting heals, you're getting everything. So there is no reason to, to get on the back foot. And then, as I've said many times before, if you're a DK, you're running Leap, okay? Leap is awesome. Okay, there's no need to be running anything else. Leap is there for the burst. It's good for it's a good cost, so you get a good amount of resources back when you cast it. Okay, and you're not a DK unless you're using Weep, Le Leap, because come on, Leap's like one of the class, one of the class looking skills in the game. It's like it's it's sick, it's sick to watch. You know, the Leap combination is is awesome, and and it feels mega when you actually destroy someone with it. So that's the skills, then, guys. Let's go into the champion points again. I say this every time, I know it's boring, but it is player specific. Okay, if you don't like my CP, run your own CP. I always blast through the um, blast through the CP, okay, because this is what best works for me. You'll have your own setup, okay. If it don't work for you, it don't work for you, and you use your own CP. But the gear will still apply. So that's my CP. Always blast through the CP. I am an Argonian, like I've said. Okay. Um, and I am a vampire. I'm, I'm probably thinking. I'm not sure yet. I am going to test probably removing vampire because the light attacks and stuff like that, and the burning status effects are really melting me down. Um, if I get someone who's pretty good, um, but as long as I keep wings up, I'm all right. But I'm um, yet yeah, then again, I could drop vampire and rest a ulti on the back bar, and I should have no dramas, okay? Because I'm no longer running misform. So we'll see how that works out. I am running the uh, Mage Munderstone for the max magic, okay? Not running the Atro because I don't need it. I could run the spell damage Atro, but I'm just preferring the more max magic because uh, I'm getting best results. And to be honest with you, I don't, the spell damage is irrelevant in this build as we have a proc set that's going to do damage no matter what either way. And then we have the Sun, which is adding uh, extra damage to our fire abilities. So we're all good there. So as, as we're looking at it now, unbuffed, okay? On the front bar, we're looking at 36 and a half max magic. We're looking at 22k half out of Cyrodiil, okay, and then nearly 2k, practically 2k spell damage, okay. That's with Alter's um, Sun being annotated on top of that, okay. And as you can see there, we've got some good resistances. We've got 23 and a half k spell resistance and 20k physical resistance with 3.2k crit resist, which is pretty, pretty good. Okay, now if you want to look at it um, all buffed up. Okay, as you can see, that's just proc straight away. We're looking at, you know, 2.4, uh, 2.3 spell damage. Okay, and then obviously we have a sun and everything on top of that. And there's unblockable damage that we're getting um, naturally, okay. So what, we'll just do a quick demo. Okay, we're buffed up here. What we're going to do, you want to do light attack structure to entropy. Okay, burning embers, choke the towel on, and then keep the, you want to keep the, uh, the pressure on. Okay, if you have to weave in a heavy attack every now and again, okay, do so. Um, and that's pretty much how you want to keep the pressure on, yeah? And keep putting that pressure on, no matter what. Mag DK is in a real good place at the moment, okay? Um, and I highly recommend trying it out. If you are struggling uh, for resources, um, and you want to go a little bit more sustain, okay, you can run uh, Seducer. Um, I mean, Combat Brilliance. Okay, there we go. Right, so if you do want to run more sustain, okay, you run Seducer Jewelry. Yes, I am a geek. I have already got my jewelry already up to four traits. Okay, so they can run Seducer, okay, and then run Seducer... Um, what am I looking for now? Mine for Seducer Sword and Board with a Seducer Resto. Okay, and you can run it that way, and you'll get you give yourself a lot more survivability. Okay, so, as you can see, it'll take me ages to deplete nearly 37k max magic. Yeah, so if you want to run more sustain, then you can run it that way. Uh, five seducer 
we'll do the uh, weapon and jewelry and then run the uh, salute on the body you're still gonna have good damage you're still gonna be able to grind targets down okay just not as quick as if you were running sun um, so I think that is it I think we've covered everything I'm using tri food as well okay um, as a with a um, mag DK the max stam is definitely just as important as having max magic okay so you really don't want to um, like run low stam on a mag DK because uh, a lot of a lot of blocking is uh, is done through mag DK while you're attacking for damage damage mitigation. So while people are putting the pressure on, you can be blocking at the same time and doing all your attacks while thermal blocking. Okay, so it's important to have that max stam pool as it is having a magic pool. In Cividal, we have about 20k 28k health. Which is more than enough. Okay. Um, honestly. Try this build out. I, I guarantee you'll have good results with it. And it's good fun as well. Watching people just get melted down. Um, it is AIDS. But it's it's, it's it's a good good bit of AIDS. Right guys. Thanks for watching. I'm going to try and release a Stamplor build. Uh, soon hopefully. Um, and then. Uh, possibly a Magblade gank build i've got coming up and i've got big things this magblade gank build it's going to be aids but if uh, that's all for now guys please subscribe please like the video if you've got any feedback or anything like that whack it in the comments um peace out